man was going to go to the moon in my professional lifetime. We wanted to do field geology on the moon. Here at Flagstaff, you know, the night sky, the seeing was good. And we went to work trying to understand how in the world you would uh, actually perform field geology on the moon under the constraints of equipment, of a pressure suit environment, and, uh, and time. I was convinced down in my gut if you have the right scientists under the right circumstances on the moon or any other place in space where you're dealing with close-up observations of the kind that you do in the field in geology, that there would be advantages to the human explorer. The question was to maximize those advantages. I'm going to walk around the south edge of crater number four so that I can get a better view of all the brown stuff that's exposed. I had gone out to the Nevada test site and looked at the only two sites where underground nuclear explosions had been carried out. These were very small devices. They were 1.2 kiloton devices and one one was buried at a depth of about 18 feet and the other was buried at a depth of about 65 feet. Uh, both of them produced craters. So I went out to Meteor Crater, Arizona, thinking that I would be able to scale up to the megaton range, the phenomena that I was looking at in the little craters. And indeed, when I went to Meteor Crater and looked at it closely, I, first of all, I was astounded because the structure of Meteor Crater was very similar to the structure of the, of the larger nuclear craters I looked at, the one that had the deepest depth of burial. There is nothing on the Earth, really, like the moon. The nearest thing would be our crater field we blew out here in Cinder Lake. So let's make a simulated orbital, from, from lunar orbit, landing site out in those cinders. Everyone uh, felt that it was a well-deserved uh, effort to, uh, to give a sense of reproduction of the lunar surface and the cinder field was an ideal place to generate those little craters. Fire! And it was a very exciting thing to watch. Uh, it was all primer cord, and even in the high-speed film, the, 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 the speed at which that primer cord went off and burned is, was just amazing. Uh, it looked so much like the Apollo landing site, you could not tell them apart. Oh, that, yeah, the rocket belt, those are the good old days, Hopi Buttes. We scared an awful lot of Navajos with that, uh, with that uh, rocket belt, I'll tell you. You know, it was just so dangerous, the, the concept of being uncontrollable. What's amazing about the whole thing is that we pulled it off with what we had at that time. The whole thing, if you look, think about it, with the technology today, you would think, well, it should have, been, it should have taken place in the last five or 10 years, not 30, 25, 30 years ago. called the old MOLAB base, the mobile laboratory kind of thing, where you would, where you could make long-range traverses, traverses that would, that would last months, maybe even long. Long-range geology on the moon. Imagine a, a vehicle that is both a, a living quarters as well as a scientific laboratory that one can just drive off across the moon, go for a thousand kilometers.